okay so the topic for today is the continuation of the discussion about the uh, design process that we will follow the, during the course uh, let me just uh, start by reminding and um, focusing a bit more about deliverable number one so the first uh, uh, thing you have to do and uh, you know that uh, today we have, we have we have been starting to create uh, the project on github and so by the 6th of april so just after the uh, the, the easter break hmm, you should uh, have uh, a, a website uh, you should create a website using the github pages uh, tool so actually in your project uh, you just follow the instruction on, on github uh, you can create you have two, two repositories each okay one of them is for the code where you can share your code and develop uh, your applications uh, they will be useful later but right now you can start publishing a website uh, on the, the first repository okay uh, and uh, just you ju just need to activate uh, the functionality that is called github pages uh, on your repository it's very easy because there's a wiser procedure that that will guide you through the different steps and uh, that mechanism is a an automatic publication of a static website uh, where you can create the HTML pages more or less uh, by your end uh, you may apply different types of templates a uh, graphical template to your website this website that you will have to create you know, by the 6th of April uh, will grow during the course so we'll have a second step with deliverable 2 and then the final version for the exam uh, you can you can keep adding information to this website that will present the project right now we really don't care about the layout about the graphic the graphics of the website so you can just keep with the with a default template if you don't want to to lose time on on the, on the layout aspects uh, right now uh, uh, we care mainly about the content not the, not the appearance of, of this website um, and what do we put on this uh, website actually uh, this first deliverable we call it the vision of the project uh, which is a sort of an extended version of the project idea you had an idea and we asked you to describe that in five to ten lines so actually it's a quarter of a page and now in the website uh, you should expand this description uh, you know more or less like a two page description the effort that we are asking you is not to upload a document uh, to be downloaded and to be checked uh, on the website or on, on, uh, on an otherwise empty website uh, but try to integrate the required information into the website design okay so we don't want to see a link called the deliverable one download download here or anything like that we want to see a website uh, that is organized however you like as you want one page different pages with one column two columns uh, do what you want do your best okay but uh, uh, we will check whether the information that the, that we require is present somewhere you know, exists somewhere on the website and easy to read easy to reach so you can organize the information and the presentation uh, how you feel better for your project and uh, the information that we are asking is uh, um, listed in this checklist uh, that I published this morning. So you find it on the uh, on the course website uh, under the exam section, mm, the exam section where you have all the deadlines. Uh, uh, close to the sixth um, of April deadline, you have a link uh, for to the PDF and doc version of this document. So what do we need? Uh, to be present on the website okay P basic project information group members you already have those just to translate them on the website a vision statement uh, is a sort of a polished description of your idea okay so maybe you read it again you make it better but the idea is a brief summary of what the system does for the user point of view remember to mention the target environment so where 
is the project uh, intended to be installed? Is it uh, you know, a kitchen, a dormitory, or whatever? Define your user. Remember to mention, it's very important to mention where and for whom the project is designed. Otherwise, a too generic project will be very difficult to follow. If applicable, there may be other stakeholders. And how the environment supports the user, which is the key question. Okay, what the problems need to be solved and the benefits for the users. Actually, uh, these are the same questions that we have been thinking around uh, in the project idea definition phase. Uh, I just listed them he here just to as a checklist. Okay, let's remember to tackle this point, uh, to give an answer to each of these points. You don't need to have a, a ballot list of, re of responses. Okay, this is just a, a trail of ideas hmm, for helping you not to forget uh, some important issues. And uh, again, don't let's not use uh, technology words uh, or technical words uh, trying to sell it or describe it to a non-engineer so if you need uh, uh, you may have at most one page but even less of printed text so on a website uh, on a website it's very difficult to read long text so try to be short hmm? give all the information in a schematic way don't uh, write long pages of text and in addition to this so more or less is uh, information that you already have uh, and try to polish and or explain better your project idea here and then we have some more specific information that we didn't ask you up to now i i told you during the project idea think about the four steps of the mei but don't write them down okay now in the d1 document in the, in the website you will have to write them down so in the project uh, what is the sensing step? What is the reasoning step? What is the acting and interacting step? Maybe this, this information could be separated from the general description of the project because the general description is for everyone. This information, it may be for somebody who already understands uh, more technical descriptions. Okay, so uh, just to be sure that we are not missing out uh, any important features especially about the action the acting and the interacting which are the difficult parts uh, of most of the projects so we remember to list down what we are acting here and what we are how we are interacting so that later on when we implement the system we don't forget uh, actually which is uh, our target and then uh, try to think uh, about uh, these uh, different features of mea systems whether and how much your project uh, covers one or more of this okay it's not uh, mandatory that all of them are covered because that's maybe some projects uh, are not transparent at all for example or maybe not so much intelligent so that would not be an important feature for them and it's okay no? but to try to highlight which are the most uh, uh, let's say important features uh, of your project with respect to these uh, categories okay in which categories one or two or, or 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 six of them all of them in which of these categories is your project strong strong hmm? is your project good because it's very adaptive or maybe it's very uh, ubiquitous hmm? because okay it depends of course on, on the project and try to highlight uh, what is good uh, and in your project what is specific specifically good in your project and these categories so we are seeking to see this kind of uh, answers in your website and then there is an important section that i uh, i think that should be opened now in this first deliverable and kept up to date uh, during the course so a section on the website where you list the open issues an open issue is uh, a problem that we don't know yet how to solve Okay, at the beginning, you have maybe many of them or some of them. I have actually no idea on how to measure this uh, quantity, how to sense a given quantity. I have really no idea of how to connect with some information source or whatever. So that would be open issues. Some problems that for which we don't know yet how to solve them or what will be the solution, the best solution for them. Uh, open issues are not just work to do 
if you know that something will take a lot of work to implement but you know what to do you already know the library you know the target you know the language so it's so it just uh, work it is just work it's not an issue it needs to be worked on but we know that it, ne it needs to be done okay open issue should be the the parts of your projects uh, for which uh, working on them is not enough you should still think on them and find solutions for them this is useful because uh, uh, you will have a point where all the major critical points are listed for you because it's very easy when you start working on the project to work on the easier parts or, the, or on the parts that you, that you know best and forget or put aside uh, those itchy or more difficult aspects uh, and then we'll uh, and postpone them until, until the end so it's a, a tool for you then when you solve something you can delete it from the open issues and maybe while you are working you will find out that more new problems come out and so you add them to this list it's also useful for us where why we review your descriptions because maybe for some of these issues for some of these issues we might have a solution or we might have suggestions okay or we might suggest you how to maybe simplify the problem or find alternative solutions from an issue that you list there so it's very difficult for us to understand all the details or the uh, inside each of the projects but if you list them what are your points that you really are scratching your head i don't know how to do this but it's important for my project we may help if you keep this list updated okay okay so these are some some questions some ideas uh, about uh, uh, how to think about your projects uh, and just be open list uh, the, the issues that you think uh, we, we will, will worry you the most uh, during the development okay so that's the structure no, not the structure the content of the website uh, that you should prepare the next uh, couple of weeks uh, um, and uh, upload it directly on github pages you don't need to submit anything just up, uh, update the pages uh, the pages will be the only public uh, public part of your project so the repositories both the code repository and the uh, html repository here are private so only you can see them but when you create a github pages uh, it's automatically the page the website is public so everybody can see it hmm? so you can also see groups uh, website for other groups and so on then if you want to make also the code public uh, you can do that by changing the the, the privacy level uh, on github but it's up to you hmm? we created uh, private repositories so that everybody should be you know, confident to work uh, on that environment and in, in the next uh, monday in ladispe so the sixth should be a friday or something like that uh, in the next Monday, we will discuss uh, group by group. Uh, uh, so we will be, we will have a, a normal lab. So there will be a text for lab number four or whatever the number will be at that date. And in parallel with the lab, so we have you have to work on the lab, but uh, we will come all all of three of us in in Ladispe. One will follow the the lab, the Python problems, and the other two will go group by group uh, by giving you some comments. Uh, about your website so in parallel we try not to waste uh, time okay so this is how it works uh, with the level one after that what happens after that uh, we uh, should try to better define the actual functions of the project what we call the identification of requirements last uh, time we spoke about this topic we, we discussed about requirements elicitation so trying to make requirements uh, come up from the users now maybe we have all the information we need uh, we need to you know, ma uh, describe it in a ordered way in order to be able to list all the specific functions that uh, the system should do and then we can start implementing each of them um, so the idea is that every project uh, should have uh, some sort of uh, requirements up front 
I'm not just writing code and see what happens. I'm writing code, I'm implementing or designing something to satisfy a given set of requirements that I discussed up front at the beginning. Discussed with whom? With the commitment, uh, with, the, with the client uh, of, the, of my project. Imagine in a commercial setting, you are a programmer and you want to develop something for, for somebody else who's going to pay you for that work. So what are you creating? You cannot create something that you think will be okay, or you try to guess what the other person wants, right? because that will lead to litigation always. And you should define at the beginning actually what are what this system should do, and then you can implement and make a system that does that does that will do will do and will implement exactly those features. Okay. So imagine writing the the requirements of your projects uh, as a sort of a contract with yourself i'm hiring myself to implement a system that will satisfy these kind of requirements okay so that you know in which direction you have to work uh, and you know when the work is finished when all the requirements are being implemented and in general thinking about requirements uh, you have two main categories of requirements one is one are called uh, and the easiest ones are called functional requirements a functional requirement is something that the system needs to do an operation an action a function high level function not just a, a python or c function high level function that the system should do so the system should uh, detect the presence of the users the system should uh, uh, send an email uh, at the end of the month uh, with some significant statistics or whatever Things that the system should do and you can make a list of the imagine all the possible you know uh, items in the menus of the website all the possible buttons in the interface each of them is actually a different function for the system when the user requests that the system should do something so it's a it's a new function that needs to be implemented of course we'll try to be or you should try to be minimal not just okay adding function over function because it's nice to have them try to think about which is the minimum set of functions that will make the system good enough or will make the system compliant to the vision document that you already have submitted and then there are so also some other kinds of requirements mm, they don't have a name like somebody calls them quality requirements but i don't like the word quality because it brings to me the idea of being qualitative so not hard uh, actually we call them non-functional requirements non-functional requirements are the constraints that the system has when implementing the functional requirements so functional requirements should be uh, I don't know the um, when the user clicks on the profile icon it will get the list of the last uh, hundred actions that we did uh, with the platforms or the hundred the last hundred times in which he entered the room with some information about them okay this is a function and then we add that this list should be completed or should be delivered in less than 200 milliseconds a timing requirement you should do that action function within a specific time this is not a function it's a constraint that we put on the execution of a function so non-functional requirements are speed are uh, hardware so you're doing something that will need to run on a raspberry with a uh, half a gigabyte of, of, of memory so you have a constraint that your database maybe you should never be higher than 20 mega for doing the same function maybe if this is a constraint a space constraint then you need to maybe make it a, a bit more complicated because you have some additional constraints constraints are user interfaces are you designing a website that will only work uh, on computers or only on smartphones or on both and each of them will give you some additional complexity in the implementation of the interface 
if you have to manage different resolutions different screen contents maybe the layout will readjust uh, depending on the type of device they are the same functions maybe the list of accesses to that room but they need to be presented in different ways the same function with different constraints constraints due to the space of the interface okay so it's very important to list uh, all of this space uh, time uh, interface constraints uh, because they make the world harder it's always easy or easier to add uh, or to change a functional requirement okay in addition to all of this the system should also mm, give you a you know the possibility of uh, of printing a report okay we just write the code for doing that changing the non-functional requirements means more or less redoing everything so you th if you think uh, at an interface that will run on a desktop and say at the, at the given point you say but let's do that also on mobile well you need to redo everything all the interface if you start from the beginning by knowing that the interface will be on mobile and desktop then it's not it's not a big issue you just take it into account that constraint and you do your choices in the in the style sheets basically if you design a website or add your interface in english and then you want also to add the i don't know the french version or the italian version or the chinese version uh, you cannot discover it too late because once is uh, designing a monolingual application another is designing a multilingual application is the issue is not do doing the translation the issue is that every string in your program should be indexed and should be stored separately so that you can cha exchange languages easily so if you know that at the beginning it's not a big issue you have a library for internationalization if you know that at the end so if you try to change non functional requirements at the end it will be a disaster if you imagine implementing an algorithm and you try and debug it in your computer and but then you try to run it on a raspberry it will be 100 times slower and it won't work uh, it won't have enough memory and so on so uh, again these are the constraints that will change how you implement the functions hmm? so, so these are more important because they uh, influence whether the system will work or not so just try to, in your mind to think about these two issues the first ones are easier because it's what the system does the second is uh, what are the complexities brought in by the limited environment in which the system should run uh, and every time you describe a requirement you should write it well now, requirements should be correct clear unambiguous complete don't forget anything but consistent so you don't you shouldn't have a requirement that tell you different things or things that are contrasting with each other i will start uh, stop on uh, or spend a, a couple of more minutes uh, on the ranked imagine we start today writing the requirement for your projects so what should your project do if i give you one hour you will come up with a list of 100 items probably or 200 because okay when you're dreaming whether when you're thinking when you're designing a lot of ideas come up and so why not let's write them ah this is a good idea okay let's write it uh, that would be good for our system and it's good it's okay because in the creative brainstorming phase every idea is a good idea okay let's throw away the bad ones but every good idea is valid and it's worth being saved and remembered but later later you s you you will discover that you will not be able to build a system with a hundred different features you should only implement maybe the most important 15 features which ones are those so it's very good to have a, a, at the beginning a discussion about which features are more important than others 
at the beginning, not the, at the end, because then you can start implementing the features that are more important. Not starting to implement the feature which is really fun to implement, uh, is really nice and, and having a lot of good time, but it's not really essential. Hmm? So imagine a product uh, that will have probably three or four or five versions, five releases, and the, f the totality of the uh, whole uh, requirements that you describe is for version release 5 or 10. Okay, they are on your roadmap. You may get there. But what will be in version 1? That's the question here. So I try to rank uh, saying, okay, these are the top features that need to be in version 1. And version 1 will be the version that will, you will present at the exam. Then, if you have more time, if you will be more productive, or if you find less uh, in unexpected problems, probably at the end you can add some more features because maybe you have one spare week or whatever. And you can add to the core features some others that are still important. They're not so mandatory, but uh, the most important ones uh, in the long list. Okay, so always try to, to think about what, which features bring most value to the project and list them in that order. So uh, to make it easy, hmm, to make it easy to describe, not to lose, to lose too much time with formal, there are formal methods for describing requirements. Okay, I, actually I, I teach a course to the... Um, management engineers uh, about this, so how to define the requirements for a given project. Um, and there are methods also, you know, that usually a, a to give you a, a complete set of requirements for your project, I would probably need a 50 pages document, more or less, for a project with the complexity of yours. If I wanted, and imagine, asking another person to do the, the implementation of exactly what you want or what you have in mind. So you need to give them a lot of details. Hmm? Uh, we are not in the position of losing so much time about this issue, so we'll try to we use a light form of requirements, uh, which is called the list of features. A feature is a set of, re of requirements uh, that allows the user to satisfy a business objective or need. So what are the user objectives, the user actions that can be solved by the system? Not the general goal, the user wants to feel better. No, no, but actually what, the user, what can the user do? Every feature is one activity, one action, one result that the user will get from the system. So focused on the user needs, and it's something, think about something that you could print on a, on a data sheet. So that this is a nice product, you have the brochure, you have the presentation, and then on the back you have the list of features. Hmm? It happens in many packages, no, for when you buy something. So that kind of description, hmm? we should try to do. And uh, um, what kind of features should we list? Uh, well, this is again a checklist uh, about what we should not forget. Uh, the system will have some behaviors that are visible to the user. So things that the user will see on our system. Which data can the user query? Which information can the user share, provide or receive? What is the acting of the system? So how does the user see that the environment is changing? The system will change, will control the color and or the intensity of the lights in your house. This is one feature because it's something that is visible to the user. The system is doing something visible to the user. The system will send you an email. Again, something that will be visible to the user. So the user will receive something service, a result, some information, thanks to that uh, system feature. If the, the, the email is not sent, uh, then that feature is missing. So it's easy to understand whether a feature is implemented or not. Hmm? 
user callable, callable functionalities. So what are the commands that the user can give to the system? They may be voice commands, may be buttons to press, uh, physical buttons, I mean, or they may be interface, uh, user interface uh, uh, menus or items or whatever. So how many, or and which ones, how many actions can the user ask from the system? Can the user ask to, um, I don't know, change uh, some setting? Um, another set of features are is which is the information sensed by the user. So for working correctly, the system needs to sense the number of people in the room. Maybe. So the sense in the number of people in, is there in the room is not a user visible behavior because this number is not interesting to, for the user, is not shown to the user, is not a user activated function, but it's a feature of the system that needs to be implemented so that the system can do its reasoning, can do its computations. When I'm saying the number of people in the room uh, actually is a difficult, uh, uh, in this example, it's a difficult problem because I don't know how to measure the number of people in the room. It doesn't matter at this time. We know that for the system to work, uh, we will have to figure out how to get that information. So what is the information that the system relies on? We can get this information la later. We can think about how we can get this information with a camera, with a people counter, so uh, uh, just a, um, a sensor on the door, counting people in and out, uh, uh, by sniffing your Wi-Fi signal, or by measuring the CO2 that you are breathing out. Uh, there are many ways. All of them are approximate, but uh, you know, the, this, this stuff that are changing, that the processor of the air in this room know how many people are here, or might know that. Um, and the available settings and the, well, I, these, are, these are actually similar to the acting so these are all the aspects uh, in which the user the system is doing something doing something visible to the user doing something uh, on the response of some user request doing something to get the data it needs and maybe changing the settings uh, or uh, acting on the environment even without the user direct interaction so just try to think about these categories of features hmm? and uh, one way is trying to imagine people using the system so a person walks in the room and waves at the sensor or waves at the ceiling why because it feels like no because maybe it wants to activate some function so users interact with the system with a purpose and so we should understand what is this the action of the system that will help users achieve their purpose so the purpose is always of the users the system doesn't have a purpose the system is a machine but the users have purposes and the system should provide them functionalities features to reach those purposes hmm? so the idea is to try to think about the users interacting with the system and you will discover that in different moments users need to do something need to have some information need to give some comment that would be those would be the features that you need to put in the system hmm? if a feature is there but there is no reason or motivation for a user to activate that feature that would be useless or ranked very low in, in the list of features um, so I try to give some example of features about my fake uh, projects about the, the alarm clock or the intelligent alarm clock so a feature is uh, the user can define a default alarm hour like a normal alarm clock you define tomorrow at 7 that's the default uh, setting but then the system can correct the alarm hour according to my Google Calendar. So the first appointment in my Google Calendar day, in my day, in the, in the next days. Um, 
of my calendar so the first is a uh, user action the user can define the second is just a behavior of the system that ch changes its settings according to some sensing because in some way the, the system is sensing my agenda through google calendar um, the system has to do two working modes at home and away it's a feature system works in a different way in something that can be visible to the user and then i will explain that in home mode so in away mode only the smartphone will ring in the morning because maybe I have, i'm away at the hotel and so i don't want uh, my house to ring because i'm not there in home mode also music and lights are used in addition to the alarm because we have those and we can use them so why not saying yet whether switching from home and away is automatic or manual i should have probably add a new feature saying the system will automatically switch from away and to home or another feature i choose uh, the user will have the ability of switching probably of course a more intelligent system is a system that is able to automatically sense and it's not difficult because you just have to, to do some geofencing on the smartphone position and uh, the alarm will detect when i wake up this is again a feature you when i wake up the, the alarm will stop or maybe it will change uh, if if the alarm involves uh, playing music i wake up maybe the music can continue while the ringing the nasty ringing can stop so the system will detect uh, that i woke up uh, and so they will change uh, the way it behaves and so it's a feature it's a feature that where the system can sense something i wake up and can do something user visible changing probably adapting the, the alarm and there are, there are some settings also maybe the user can define their prefer preferred music the genre what kind of music genre uh, you prefer or specific play playlists so you want to choose the songs or just let you choose some songs of, of a, a given type and uh, the user should be able to associate their own devices because we say okay i'm ch i'm what is that using uh, lights and music it means that my system is some way connected with some music generator some loudspeaker and some with some intelligent lights that you have in my house so i'm when i imagine install the system i need to associate them with the specific lights that are in my house so there be another feature that maybe we, all, we use only once in the life of the system but it needs to be there of course these kind of features will not be important in in these projects okay we can do the setup by hand what we want to see is mainly the normal working of the system not the maybe complex setup so if you don't have all the user registration user settings or whatever we don't care hmm? they are not important features for from the mei point of view uh, the others are more important so you try to actually take the idea you have in mind imagine the user interacting with your project and write down the list uh, of possible actions or features that the system <coughs> can do while supporting the user all of these okay you will have a, one additional month to do this this will be required by the beginning of may okay so we are a bit ahead in the future well we'll ask you for the second deliverable that will contain the features and also the system architecture that we are talking in a minute okay so once you have the list of the features you know what the system should do and now it's time to think about how to implement it no sooner because it's not useful to start thinking about you know a given fancy sensor until you are sure that the features of the system require that kind of sensor it's not worth starting to learn or to implement some i don't know android application when you're not sure yet whether the system features will require a mobile application for the user or it will be just everything automatic without without a specific interface so 
try to delay the actual implementation of the system until you have clear ideas about what the system should do so the list of features um, what is the architecture well uh, we try to split it down in four different areas system hardware software and network architectures so the system architecture is the general picture of how the system is organized okay architecture in computer science means uh, the list of components and components may be hardware components software components or network components and how they relate to each other how they communicate to each other with each other which that is exchanged when and so on and of course part of the architecture will be also the environment in which the system is installed and the user in some way will interact with the system in, in its architecture so the system architecture means uh, okay how many computers do we have do we have one central computer plus 17 raspberries plus 1900 arduinos or whatever and one cloud service or we have two big computers or we have also some computation on the user smartphone or it depends on our project so clarify which are the we call them computational nodes because there may be anything from uh, uh, a very simple uh, you know arduino board to a, a full pc or a server in the cloud and in the middle we have a raspberry board or maybe a smartphone application each of them can do some computation so which are our computational nodes uh, and what are they for and how are they used which are the physical sensors and actuators in our systems where do we want to install them now we are you know, going to the, the real project user interfaces which are the user for the interacting is there are they web applications are they mobile application where is the user interacting is something mounted on the wall a panel no a touch panel mounted on the wall or is the interface is just maybe some buttons or leds or some lcd some somewhere that will show some information to the user with only some i don't know imagine imagine something you know within the shower for example so you cannot use a, a touch screen within a in a in in a wet environment because it doesn't work and you want to protect it also for the uh, humidity and so you have to embed some maybe very simplified buttons one three or three, three or four buttons uh, um, and uh, and maybe a display or not even a full display but only some lights or some leds or no it depends on the on the project there are all items that are put there that you put into your project because the user can see them and get information or the user can interact with hmm, all these interfaces and which functions are deployed on which nodes okay i have three computers what is running on the first one what is running on the second one which applications how do we split the computation across the different nodes this was the system architecture the high level picture and then we go down about the architect hardware architecture giving the list the detailed list of which actually components we use for computational nodes for sensors and actuators for user interfaces and the same for the software okay which are the libraries that we use which are the servers which are the applications that we, we need to develop how do inter how do different parts of software interact with each other what are the apis the interfaces the software interfaces to let uh, a small application that is wrote in raspberry to speak with my uh, i don't know database uh, that i implemented on a cloud server how do they communicate okay and uh, in the software architecture we should always be open trying to think that uh, some software components may already be existing so we use something that is already implemented or we need to build some new software for the project uh, in the hardware case uh, you, you we cannot build uh, a computer okay so we have to use what is available hmm? so there are no choice we are, we are we may only select which computers to use 
and the software case we can select some software or create one and see if we select something that we list what kind of libraries or framework do we want to use so this is an idea as an example in my project uh, of uh, um, a possible system architecture so we have the user we have uh, a phone a smartphone of the user something to generate music uh, something to sense about the environment uh, uh, everything is collected by a central server that does some computation can provide a web interface that server so what i'm saying here is that if i want to set uh, the alarm or the preferences of the playlist uh, i go to a web interface that is centralized on the server i don't need to do that on my phone this is a choice hmm? to simplify my work only the web interface is available and uh, the central server will interact with my calendar so all the computation all the decisions are taken here the phone is used uh, as a sensor because they can sense the position of the user i'm at home or not i can sense maybe whether the user woke up or not if if he lifts the phone with his hand then he's awake he's awake and the phone can ring so it's also something that delivers information to the user and so ambient sensor gets information hmm, and the music music will uh, make sounds for the users and so on so a, a picture of the main you see that some of these are physical objects computing nodes the phone the central server a cloud service some of them are software that we need to implement the web interface for example some application on the phone for sure and some are devices sensors and the music player and so from this general system architecture we go down and list uh, the hardware architecture sensors phone server music server and some idea how to how do we implement the music server maybe we need a raspberry with an amplifier and uh, how do you we get the ambient sensors what kind of sensor do we need oh we need some movement sensors in the room some white or movement sensor under the bed to understand if he wakes up and how do we integrate with this uh, this sensor together well maybe we have a raspberry that has a local gateway collects all the information about from the sensors and sends them to the cloud server because right now i have what is that a narrow and arrow uh, uh, data exchange from the engine sensors to the server but actually a sensor that by itself doesn't have the capability of speaking with a server somewhere else it needs some node some cpu some computational node to assist them to get the, the data with low level protocols and to send them over the web so maybe we need uh, a raspberry for doing this job and maybe this raspberry is the same that we use as a music server so we start thinking about how many devices we need hmm? and so how which functions these are two different functions that may be implemented on the same hardware probably and that hardware needs to be local needs to be in the room cannot be shifted to the server because it needs to drive the music player the amplifier the audio amplifier so it should be there physically and should talk with the, to, with the ambient sensor through local networks so it cannot be there that is why we need at least two different computational nodes one here for doing all the computation and one locally to manage the sensors and the music hmm? so this is kind of detail that we are we will create hmm? imagine the different software the different features of the system how do we implement them what do we need for implementing those features so it's always good to have a checklist of the features with us and say okay feature number 17 how do we implement that what is needed which software which hardware is needed to implement this feature well the server may be anywhere on the web uh, may be also in-house maybe outside uh, as long as it's always on and, and always connected for example 
so in our project we, we may we may we may implement that on a pc in the lab for example or use there are some cloud servers that are very cheap or nearly free that you can they can host our applications so we can use them uh, and then we have the list of software which is will be probably the the longer of the three uh, we need sound software for collecting data from the sensors and sending them to the server we need some music server that is able to manage playlists uh, have an api for starting and stopping and then driving the the audio amplifier and an application on the mobile phone for ringing for relying user information to the server some web application to adjust the user settings and for doing all these statistics and interfacing with the google's calendar and some data storage on the server so it will be an a database and not just a, the front-end interface but also a database where we have all the data all the cal user calendar uh, that will be used uh, to detect the ringing in time and so on so this is all software that we need to create in some way but create not all of them maybe some music server software it's available somewhere it's uh, probably an uh, popular component so probably we can find some solution without implementing it from from scratch hmm? we know that we need all these software items some of them probably can be reused from existing project open source software projects somewhere and finally let's not forget about the network architecture because all of these nodes all these computing nodes all these sensors need to communicate with each other in some way usually in a wireless way under wi-fi maybe under 3g or 4g networks in some cases or with specific protocols because if you have the you know the the philips lights uh, they only work with the zb protocol so that would be a different protocol and you need to map who is exchanging information with whom doing the network map and if two nodes need to communicate how can do that how can exchange information hmm? and um, one issue would be public addresses uh, to host the servers so probably it's easy to do something that runs uh, on the ladispa network where we have uh, all our access point with our wi-fi network which is not filtered if you do if you try to do something by connecting to polito or edron networks uh, most of the ports most of the, of the traffic will be filtered and so it will be very difficult to to implement the project with the, the public wi-fi network also that's why in the lab we have our own which is not filtered by the firewalls hmm, of uh, at least internally okay so we have uh, the list uh, of the hardware components and software components up to the description of what they need to do and finally the last step uh, would be to identify the specifically precise models okay at this point uh, we may have some movement sensor listed okay that's enough i know I need some movement sensor i know i need uh, some movement sensor that can relate that data to a local raspberry which sensor do i use at this point there are many different sensors available they use different protocols which one do i choose so the last step uh, would be actually to choosing the specific component hardware component hardware component may be of the shelf component of the shelf components so something that is already available on the market or still better is already available in the lab and so we use it maybe we need to learn how to interface with that object but it's already there it's already working in some case okay so we can select uh, all the components that we need uh, for our project from existing ones and if you are selecting more than one if possible try to use uh, as much as possible the same communication protocol so don't if you have three sensors don't choose one bluetooth sensor one zigbee sensor and one uh, uh, wi-fi sensor 
because otherwise the work for interfacing all of them will be more complex from the software point of view okay so if possible it's just a, a warning mm. as a last resort if we actually really don't find any of the shelf existing components we can think of building one with some electronics with some arduinos with some uh, soldering and pro um, <coughs> prototyping uh, it can be done in many projects probably we need some small components that will en enable that function which is not available in commercial devices try to thin this as a last resort okay it's not uh, an arduino course it's not a maker course if we need to do something we we know we are able to do that we can do it but should be 15% of the of the work 10% of the work not 60 percent hmm? otherwise you will focus too much on a component and not the, on the system hmm? and focusing too much on a single component will probably destroy if it's an acting component it will destroy the sensing you will not have resources or time to do a good sensing if it's a sensing component you will not have any acting and in both cases uh, you are doing too much electronics to think about a nice user interface so um, the time is, is constant so in june we should have finished everything and so uh, try not to spend too much time in the electronics part so the idea is that from the system architecture we have all the hardware software and network requirements we can split some of the components are off the shelf ones so we just list them and some are do it yourself do it yourself components means selecting uh, the board so do we run an arduino for example which one because you know there are there's a wide selection of different types of boards and which uh, ios do we need to interface with that board so at that point the problem is a is a sub project a smaller project nested in the main projects of of creating that specific custom component that at the end will be put together with the, all the others and we have the final list of bill of materials the list of items that we need to build the system from the hardware point of view from the software point of view uh, ideally the process is the same some of the shelf software may be available some library that we use uh, some external service that we use and many will be do it yourself some software that we need to implement by ourselves where does it run and what does it do um, so all of these the features that we discussed before plus the architecture definition should be in the second stage of the our deliverables so at the beginning of may the idea is that at the beginning of May, you have everything you need uh, to know about your project. All the functions, all the features are being listed. All the components that you need uh, have been listed. We will also, but that, but that by, sorry, sorry, by that time, we'll also have the list of the components that you need and we don't have in the lab. So we can start bu buying them or procuring them in some way. Okay? And... Uh, all of this uh, so the mm, the month of, of april will be devoted for to thinking about the features and the architecture at the end of april you have clear ideas we, you write them in the on the website and during may and june you can just implement and develop your project in parallel during march and april we will continue the you know the, the, the classes about python web application apis and so on so that you will have the tools for implementing uh, the you know the conceptual tools and the languages for implementing the project uh, during may so we are going in parallel while we are you know trying to help you learn the basics uh, of the technology that you need to use uh, in parallel you think about uh, the features or the requirements of your project at the in the first week of may everything will come together 
and the project will be defined and you will have the knowledge for starting to build them and so you have more than one full month for implementing it and you will see from this course schedule that from that day i don't know whether the wi-fi is my friend today because this morning it wasn't You notice that schedule here. Yeah. That starting with May, most of the time will be supervisor group here, 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 and or, and or very practical and song classes. So actually, we have a, a flipping point uh, now in the course at this stage and the around the 10th of may mm, all the information that we need both from the classic from a theoretical point of view and from the and your analysis of the project will come together and then we uh, will use all the hours that we have to let you work on your project and try to support you on your project okay so basically the theory of the course will be finished here uh, except from very small information but will be more practical okay so are we finished with that no because okay we we said at the beginning of may we have the clear the ideas about our project very clearly about features and architecture and then you start the implementation implementation means if you decided against my suggestions to implement some hardware component uh, you, you probably some of you will start working on that component alone probably it takes one person at least to create one component and so try to think that that person will not be able to work uh, on the software of the si of the application or on interface or on the building the prototype uh, and developing the software is the other big task also deploying the architecture so having all the computers started to connect all of them making them talk to each other share a, a network and so on is is some some work that needs some time especially if you're doing that for the first time so at that point uh, you should plan for working in parallel with the different aspects of the project that is why it's important that you write down the features and the architecture um one of the most dangerous thi most dangerous things that you can do is to have one or two of them that have everything in their mind they have perfectly clear what the project is about so they i, I every year i have one group with this attitude why didn't you, do you write i asked them why didn't you write all the features down ah oh, but i know them i'm sure i'm the, the idea is clear huh? then you start questioning them and you understand that different people in the group have ideas but they have different ideas about, about the project hmm? and if you have different ideas of if one person maybe has everything in mind and the other only have partial views it would be impossible to organize the work unless everybody is on the same line about the project everybody should have the sh same shared vision about what you want to do what you want to build if the, this information is shared and everybody agrees and so the only way is to write it down fight for for choosing what to put in the system have argue do whatever you do better sell your mother uh, but at the end you have one set of requirement of features that is the the one that will be implemented and at that point everybody should stop arguing and start implementing okay but everybody knows what the system will be do will be when will look like and what so i'm implementing a, a software module but i know exactly where this module will be run and which other modules will it will need to speak with hmm? or to exchange data with 
if you don't have a good design before ends you will have a very bad experience in the implementation so in this case i try to depict the implementation phase in this diagram so the implementation starts from the architecture from the features from the list of materials we have some software development uh, about the software for the sensing the acting the reasoning the interacting some hardware that need to be installed and configured sensing acting interacting of course the reasoning is software and so it doesn't uh, involve hardware components reasoning should be done in software so it's missing here and maybe the do-it-yourself components uh, the same so each of these will be probably one specific or set of functions to be implemented hmm? At the end you have all the implemented software all the implemented hardware are we done no because uh, completing the implementation doesn't mean that the project is finished or especially that is working so i put it at the end but actually it should be at the beginning testing so when the project is done uh, or during the development of a project always remember to test what you do test the, every single piece that you develop should be tested separately and then when you put them together you do some integration testing say check whether they are working together really hmm? and whether okay that sensor is, is uh, sensitive enough uh, for uh, detecting the person that wakes up or not maybe the earlier you you, you discover that uh, the better huh? it would be easier to check it so we see a lot of people that do the first testing uh, probably on the day on the day of the exam or the day before okay and so you find systems that uh, during the demo they crash twice or three times uh, and because not everything was tested before hmm? because uh, everybody assumed uh, that is, it was going to work and so they spent time in, a, in implementing additional features rather than in testing the existing ones okay there's a balance on how many features you implement in a given time and how well do you test them so what is the quality level of, of each of these functions hmm? in general we, we always prefer something that has less functions but it works uh, in a more robust way mm -hmm. we see we've seen projects uh, that worked only once in their life uh, it could not be repeated a second time because they were so kludgy and so you know put together with an improbable sequence of events uh, that they could not be replicated another time and in other cases we saw projects where, where the, the you know the group were so much confident that they said do you want to try it huh? they let us try it they, they didn't want to demonstrate it itself they wanted us uh, to try it and this is uh, always risky because something always crashes on, on you especially imagine how, how often it will crash on other people okay so and the difference between this and that are actually the validation that you do on your project so it's not bad to stop every now and then and say okay now i'm going to test this part of the system and until it's work i'm not doing or implementing anything new okay um okay this uh, was a description of a linear process okay vision features architecture implementation testing so what they call the waterfall model waterfall that goes always from the high level to the low level and never goes back hmm? but actually in programming is more like uh, the esker uh, drawing where the waterfall always goes down but you're always in the same loop okay so you should plan for the fact that if something during implementation turns out different from what you initially imagined be prepared to go back and change the architecture oh i thought that this could be done easily with uh, by an integration with i don't know google calendar or gmail and then you find that the api of google calendar doesn't allow you the set a specific feature 
and what do you do at this point while you are implementing you discover something a problem here well it happens it always happens so you have to go up back some steps and change probably the features of the system or the requirements or change the architecture so we don't okay we can't talk we can't use google calendar we need to use something else let's look again search again for some other solution so it's important to write down the features and the architecture so that everyone is, is on the same page but they are not uh, the laws huh? that cannot be changed it's something that can be changed if later on some unexpected problem will arise and at that point we need to stop discuss change the design and then correct the implementation so we are always doing some sort of uh, planning implementation testing and uh, correcting the planning correcting implementation redoing some testing and so on until we reach our final project our final result that is actually complete and tested and working okay from the practical point of view i think it's the last slide yes while you're working what are we these are general you know, ideas but for the course for the exam practically all the deliverables are integrate are to be integrated on the website of the course you only have two deliverables there will be a final one which is actually the final version of the course uh, where you need uh, to add a video hmm? of a video of the of the presentation of the system um, all the deliverables should be submitted through github on the website for the deliverable contents uh, and uh, we i shown you the checklist for d1 for the one and later on we'll discuss about the checklist for d2 so what kind of information must be included for d2 and all the rest uh, all the other project uh, you can use it for the source code our suggestion is to actually use github for working we saw that, that some groups actually did all the work uh, on their computer and they committed all the final work at the end uh, on github hmm? that means that they were not they were not they weren't working as a group because all the code was just on one computer just imagine what happens if this computer falls down from the stairwell okay all your project is there you will kill your friend uh, for sure and uh, uh, and then you have to start from scratch okay github is there for storing all the versions of the project for letting you work on different parts of the project having a shared view of the project if you need more repositories just ask we have unlimited repositories to create in our organization so for right now you have one repository which is the group dash code one you can start working on that if you need two or three because maybe you want to have uh, you know the mobile application in one repository and the web application in another just tell us i will create another one and you can work okay so it's not an issue but use it really commit there we will also use that uh, during the exam to check uh, whether everybody actually committed to the project now if we see all the projects committed by all with the same person then we have a question about what did the other the other three did in the project hmm? they didn't learn uh, uh, to use github or they didn't actually implement uh, part of the project so but but before thinking about the exam evaluation really think about uh, exploiting a workflow that is supported by these code sharing um, uh, applications or services about deliverables we gave you two deliverables in two dates if if you submit the deliverable by that date we will check it and we will give you some feedback in the lab if you don't submit the deliverable in time if you don't do it we don't care if we provide you some feedback and you ignore our feedback we don't care okay this is the contract that we have uh, uh, the deliverables are a way for us to help you developing this project during the course 
then on the day of the exam we will review everything from scratch so we will review the website with all the information the github the website uh, the vision uh, the architecture and so on so the only moment in which we will check your work for evaluation for grading is on the day of the exam okay that's clear so before that before that day we are your friends we are on your side we try to make you improve your work on the date okay no not so much we will be on the other side because we have some work some evaluation work to do the idea is that if you miss a deadline well you have to integrate on your own you miss the chance of having some discussion or some feedback but it doesn't prevent you for doing a good job for the exam okay if we tell you in the feedback to change something and you don't change it okay fine probably when we see everything at the exam probably mm, we will notice that something is missing again or, or maybe it will be okay I don't know if you don't want to do any of this you cannot submit you may I hope not but you may even never submit a deliverable and then come the day before the exam with everything online the only moment where we we will where we will check actually your work is here before that uh, of, of course we have some schedule to have some ordered line of work okay. but don't uh, really don't think that we are judging or evaluating you during the course we are not we are really trying to understand your project your ideas and trying to help you improve the ideas and probably to avoid some problems hmm? that we can see maybe i had uh, that some problem is expecting you and so we we'll try to steer you away from those okay so try to keep this discussion easy hmm, during the the different uh, deliverables okay it's enough for me today so have a nice evening and remember that uh, all the uh, red and gray projects uh, that were due by yesterday night actually we will revise them probably tomorrow and we will tell you how whether you can proceed okay so all the projects that were that were submitted in the second round document will have a feedback by tomorrow okay we will read them and tell okay you can proceed to the final document or you still need uh, to change something okay all the other ones can proceed to work on d1 deliverable d1 on the vision document thank you